of this topic is to identify the eight factors necessary for choosing proper electrodes and to correctly identify electrode types using the American Welding Society's electrode classification system. The electrodes used with shielded metal arc welding consist of a core wire and a coating of flux. The core wire transmits current to the electric arc and supplies the filler metal to produce the weld. The flux coating, broken down by the heat of welding, produces shielding gases, normally carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. The flux can also provide alloying elements or iron powder to control the weld metal chemistry and the oxidizers and purifying agents to remove contaminants and oxygen from the weld. One end of the electrode is free of the flux coating, which allows the pickup of current from the electrode holder. The other end of the electrode is also bare at the tip to allow arc starting. Selection of the proper electrode for the job depends on eight key points. Base metal strength properties, base metal composition, the position of welding, the type of current available, the type of joint and its fit up, the thickness and shape of the base metal, service conditions, and production efficiency and job conditions. When working in a factory, fabricating shop, or in field erection, the answers to these questions are found in welding procedures, blueprints, or other related specifications. Selection of the proper electrode under these conditions presents no serious problem. The American Welding Society has established a classification system which identifies the various electrodes according to their tensile strength, welding position, current type, flux coating type, and the composition of the deposited weld metal. The classification is made up of the letter E, followed by four or five digits. Sometimes a suffix is added for further identification. The reason for using both four and five digit numbers is that part of the number indicates the tensile strength of the weld metal produced by a particular electrode. In the four digit number, the 60 indicates a minimum tensile strength of 60,000 pounds per square inch. The 110 in the five digit number indicates 110,000 pounds per square inch. The letter E indicates electrode and is used with all numbers. The next to last digit in the electrode classification is used to specify the position of welding that can be used for that electrode. And the last digit is used to indicate the type of flux coating and the type of current to be used. If the number has a suffix, such as C2, it means that the electrode is composed of a specific type of alloy. Refer to your workbook or American Welding Society publications for information and tables that explain the meaning of each digit and suffix in the AWS classification. In review, if you wish to find out the characteristics of an electrode, for example, E8018C2, the E means that it is the number for an arc welding electrode. The next two digits, 80, mean that the electrode will deposit a weld with a minimum tensile strength of 80,000 pounds per square inch. Now this means that one square inch of the weld can hold a load of at least 80,000 pounds. The next digit designates the welding position. A number one here is used to indicate that the electrode may be used in all welding positions, flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. If the number is a two, the electrode is limited to flat and horizontal fillet welding positions. And if the number is a four, the electrode may be used in the flat, horizontal, overhead, and vertical down positions. The 
last digit signifies the usability and performance of the electrode. By checking your workbook or reference publication, you can find that the 8 in this example means that the current to be used may be either alternating or direct current electrode positive. That the arc will produce medium digging with medium penetration. The flux coating is of the low hydrogen type and contains 25 to 40 percent iron powder. The suffix is used to indicate the chemical composition of the weld deposit. By checking a reference table, we find that the C2 means that the well will contain 12 hundredths percent carbon, 1.2 percent manganese, 6 to 8 hundredths percent silicon, and 3 to 3 and 75 hundredths percent nickel. As stated earlier, the selection of the proper electrode depends on eight key points that relate to the characteristics of each electrode type. The first point is base metal strength properties. This must be known in order to select a compatible filler metal. As a general rule, any E60 type electrode is sufficient because its filler metal will overmatch most mechanical properties. If the steel is low alloy, refer to the first three digits of the electrode classification and select the one that most closely matches the tensile strength of the base metal. Point number two is the composition of the base metal. Welding procedures, blueprints, and specifications will give the base metal type. However, under some conditions, such as field repair, this may not be known. There are various tests you can make to determine the nature of the base metal and its properties with a reasonable degree of accuracy. You can use a magnet to check the strength of attraction to the base metal. Each type of steel has its own degree of attraction. Metals can also be typed by the kind of sparks it gives off when touched to a grinder. A chisel can be used to gauge the relative hardness of steel an indication of its carbon content. Or a visual examination of the broken part can be made. The appearance of the break will vary depending on the metal type. Again, as a rule of thumb, any E60 electrodes deposited metal will slightly overmatch the tensile strength of mild steel. For low alloy steels, refer to the suffix of the electrode classification and select the one that matches it as closely as possible. For special steels, such as high strength, low alloy, and high carbon grades, select a low hydrogen type electrode. Point number three. Electrodes are designed to be used in specific welding positions. Match the electrode to the welding position to be encountered by referring to the next to last digit of the electrode classification. Point four, welding current. Some electrodes are designed to operate best with direct current, some with alternating current, and some types will work with either. Refer to the last digit of the electrode classification and select the electrode that matches the type of power source to be used. Five, joint design and fit up. Welding electrodes are designed with a digging, medium, or soft arc for deep, medium, or light penetration. The last digit of the electrode classification also indicates this factor. Deep penetrating electrodes with a digging arc should be used when the joint fit up is tight. At the other extreme, light penetrating electrodes with a soft arc are required when welding thin materials or when the root openings are too wide. Thickness and shape of base metal. Weldments may include thick sections of complex shapes. The electrode selected should have maximum ductility to avoid weld cracking. Select the low hydrogen types, EXX 15, 16, or 18. 
service conditions or specifications. Some weldments are subjected to severe service conditions, such as extremely low or high temperatures or shock loading. The selected electrode should match base metal composition and ductility and impact resistance properties. This usually involves selecting low hydrogen types. Often, the welding procedure or specifications will indicate which electrode classification to use. Production efficiency and job conditions. Some electrodes are designed for high deposition rates but may be used only in certain welding positions. If they can be used, select the high iron powder types, EXX20, 24, 27, or 28. Other conditions may be present which will require experimentation to determine the most efficient electrode. Mild and low alloy steel electrodes may be classified into four groups. F1, the high deposition group, EXX20, 24, 27, and 28. F2, the mild penetration group, EXX12, 13, and 14. F3, the deep penetration group, EXX10 and 11. And F4, the low hydrogen group, EXX15, 16, and 18. Electrodes in the same grouping operate and are run the same way. In summary, under production conditions, the choice of electrode type will have already been made in the design and production engineering stage based on the eight points. But for field repairs or in welding job shop situations, the welder may have to use considerable judgment in selecting a suitable electrode. As welding skill is developed, the welder should also enlarge his knowledge of electrodes as each new welding condition is met. For electrodes without equivalent AWS numbers, you will have to consult the manufacturer's data. Always be aware of electrode performance. Be sure you are using the recommended type.